Hello, Truth Finders. It's the ghost. Welcome to Stranger World, where we are taking a look at what others are claiming to be true, and together we're trying to find answers. And because answers are what we're seeking, I thought we could, as analyzers, take a look at some of the more crime-related stories out there. Of course, we will be hearing more from Audrey this week. Just wanted to give her a few days to sort of take in everything that's happening to her as we know it. But okay, I thought I'd dip into some true crime, if you will, and share a few stories about things that are out there that people are, they all believe are true, and they just can't figure them out. So let's start with this one, the strange vanishing of Andrew and Elizabeth Toth. And this was posted back in February of this year, but this year, and it's a mystery that is still unsolved. It goes kind of a ways back, 1939. And this says, what causes some people to just step off the face of the earth? We hear about this, and then you kind of don't hear about those stories again. Where do these missing people go, and how strange are their disappearances? The year on this one was 1939. Not a good year for one of the Hungarian immigrants, Andrew Toth. In 1930, he had moved to New York with his new wife, Julia Voda, where they had enjoyed a content life and had raised their daughter, Margaret. Indeed, things had been going very well for the couple until 1939, when Julia tragically died of blood poisoning, leaving Toth and Margaret in a state of deep bereavement. Toth would go on, though, to fall in love with another woman by the name of Elizabeth Fabian. And for the first time since Julia had died, both Toth and Margaret were happy once more. Margaret saw Elizabeth as a second mother, and the couple even made plans to have their own child. However, dark clouds were on the horizon, and they would soon go down the path of a strange vanishing and mystery that has never been solved. On August 17th of 1943, a friend of Elizabeth by the name of Elizabeth Euling went to the subway station to meet up with her to go to their workplace, something they did every day. They always met at the same time. And Elizabeth Toth was never late. Yet on this day, she didn't arrive at all. Euling waited and then waited some more, but Toth never showed up. Now, how many of you have carpooled or you're meeting someone before work If they don't show up, you kind of need to move about your day, so you don't think much of it at the time. We can't have it affect what we're doing. That's usually what we are thinking. But on this day, Euling went to her friend's apartment, only she found no one at home. And when she tried again later that evening, her knocks at the door remained unanswered. She would contact Andrew Toth's place of work, but that would turn out to be that he had never come in that day. And this is when Euling began to suspect something was very wrong. The Toths were not known to just skip work without telling anyone. And they were mostly very punctual, responsible people. So, yeah, this certainly seemed very unusual. It was even stranger when a full week passed with no word from the Toths. Euling assumed that they must have gone out of town, but they had not mentioned such a plan to anyone. Luckily, they found that Margaret was still at her summer camp where she'd been staying. She was blissfully unaware that her parents had seemingly vanished into nothing and having not heard from them either. It was then that Euling decided to contact the police. Now, nowadays, people would contact the police a lot faster, wouldn't they? And we also have a bigger understanding. If people close to someone know there's unusual behavior, it's gotten more well known that the police take that into consideration and how they approach the case. But not back then. Back then, people were still free to do what they wanted, and people questioned less. I mean, people still can go about their lives and do what they want to do, but if it is very unusual and no one shows up, people today tend to take that a little bit more seriously. But back then, and to the police, it was maybe just two lovebirds who had gone away on a spur-of-the-moment getaway. For a week? Euling wasn't buying this at all. The Toths were not the type to do that, especially not without telling their beloved daughter. And additionally, Andrew had been scheduled to take a test for American citizenship that week. So why would he have just skipped town without saying anything? And his wife? Just to be sure, the police decided to make a stop at the Toth home to check things out. Again, this would be happening right away in today's world. 
There was still no one at home, and they ended up letting themselves in. The apartment seemed normal, no signs of anything particularly amiss. Nothing was missing. Even the luggage was still there. Certainly didn't seem that they were taking a week-long trip. There was even food in the icebox. And then Yuling's attention was captured by an odd sight. In the sink, she saw a dirty, used frying pan. And on the table were three glasses with whiskey in them, which might have seemed fairly mundane to the police. But to Yuling, it was strange in that Elizabeth Toth was known to be a neat freak, unlikely to leave any unwashed dishes just laying around. They also rarely had visitors and rarely drank alcohol. So why were there three whiskey glasses out on the table? Who had been there? Another clue was turned up with a name jotted down on a piece of paper, which read Emma Fiquette, who Euling had never even heard of. With some prodding, the police went to talk to Emily, as it was the only possible lead they had, and they soon learned that she was a cousin to one of the Toths. But she also did not know where they had gone, and so the next chapter of this mystery would begin. Euling would end up being referred to a detective, John McCoy, and they would uncover some interesting details. Andrew's boss claimed that he had left town to go visit his sick sister-in-law. But when his sister-in-laws were contacted, it turned out that no one had been sick, and they knew nothing of any plans for him to visit them. So why did he lie to his boss? McCoy also spoke to a neighbor who claimed to have seen the Toths the night before they vanished and claimed that they told him they were going shopping, after which several people had seen them around town before they simply disappeared into thin air. It would also turn out that in the days leading up to their disappearance, Elizabeth Toth had seemed very nervous and uneasy, acting in a very paranoid fashion, as if she was scared. But of what she was afraid of, nobody had a clue. A little digging into Andrew Toth's background also turned up some intriguing details. The most alarming thing was that Toth had not exactly been in his ex-in-law's good graces, apparently having had his dying wife sign over her savings to him and then refusing to pay her hospital bill. By all accounts, the Vodas loathed him and seemed more pleased than anything that he had gone missing with no love lost at all. Some more digging uncovered the fact that although relatively well off, Andrew Toth had been a cheapskate, basically, and was not without a fair share of angry people who claimed to have been ripped off by him. It also turned out that Toth had known he had enemies, apparently sleeping with a hatchet under his pillow. According to a friend who had stayed with him to keep him company while Julia was in the hospital, indeed, he allegedly was never far from that hatchet and had constantly been looking over his shoulder. On top of all of this, he had been very vocally against the Nazis, which seemed like a fairly dangerous thing to do considering the large German population where he lived. Although none of this was concrete evidence that Toth had met with foul play, it certainly was suspicious. And also suspicious was the fact that Toth had been known to carry around large amounts of cash in a money belt. He didn't trust banks and he was too paranoid to keep it at his house. So he would just carry it around, and he apparently made no secret of all the cash he was packing, calling it his nest egg and claiming that he planned to use it to go back to Hungary. So there's something else. This raised the possibilities that he had been a victim of robbery, or that maybe he'd actually gone through with his plan to go back to Hungary. But then why would he lie to his boss? Why would he leave his daughter behind? If it was robbery, then it still didn't explain where he had gone and why his wife was also missing. An even grimmer scenario was that he had murdered his wife in order to escape back to his homeland. But there was absolutely nothing to suggest that he would have ever done this. More clues would roll in, such as the fact that it was claimed by a friend that Elizabeth Toth had been pregnant, but that Andrew had not wanted the child. Did this have any connection? We've heard of those stories today. One doesn't want the baby, someone ends up dead? Is that what happened here? What was going on? Where did Andrew and Elizabeth Toth go? What was the meaning of all the strange clues? No one knows. And just about the only thing that's for sure is that they were never seen again. And so it was, guys, but so it still is today. And since we're truth finders, I wanted to find out what you guys thought of these strange mysteries. Those people that go away, these mysteries that are never solved, 
are they worth investigating? What do you think of them? They kind of go parallel with some of the stories that we've been talking about, the unbelievable. So I kind of want to know, are you only interested in things that are completely unbelievable? Or are you also interested in things like this, the unsolved, just the crimes in general, whether they're solved or not? What do we think of what seems to be more concrete that's going on in our world? Do you have an interest in it? Please share your thoughts. Your thoughts mean a lot. This channel here was made for one reason many years ago, a few years ago. Let's put it that way. And because of issues, we migrated over to They Call Me the Ghost, which is where true stories of my jobs are. And by the way, we will be starting those up again very, very soon. So we have that. But then here we've sort of been exploring some of those things that are unbelievable that other people are saying and what we think of that. What about these real crimes, this true crime stuff that's out there that are either pushing humans to the limit, because how does that happen, or things that are never solved at all? I really want to know what you think about that. Maybe we could do some more of that here as well. And don't forget Audrey and the other mysteriously alien impregnated women out there. That story will continue this week, so check back for that. And then I also want to know what you think about true crime. What do you think of that? So let me know your thoughts. Again, we are watching. Your comments do matter, so please keep them coming. And as always, guys, I will talk to you all soon.